Okay. I knew that would happen. Okay. The East Breeze I-1500. Uh, this is the largest one that I've gone to play with so far. And we're gonna, we're gonna see what makes it work today. Uh, this video is gonna be seeing what's on the inside. We're gonna see what comes in the box. First, these things come with either white or black blades. I got the black blades because that's just be who I am. Uh, blades are, they're a nylon fiber reinforced setup and they're not, they're not very pretty to look at. Uh, there's a lot of uh, visual texture of, I don't know, the, it, they feel smooth, but as I think they could be, I think they could be neater. Uh, they are proper airfoils. Uh, there's only a couple spots where the casting is not very clean. Uh, so I, mean, I think they could be better, but it's not like they're made poorly. The hub itself is made out of half inch steel or 12 millimeter steel. Um, it is, it's keyed. Uh, it, it's, they painted it while it was still dirty. There's slag and debris that they just glued down with the paint and they didn't spend a whole lot of effort like deburring the edges, but it doesn't, doesn't really look too bad and it's one of those things where it, it, the visual problems it has probably not a very big deal. The paint is really crummy. I expect this thing to still be rusted after you know a year. This is the vein and it is the first thing that comes in the package that I don't care much for. It is made from PVC uh, which I mean it's an easy material to, to make stuff with and it, it, does, it looks very nice but this stuff after it's out in the sun for uh, a while it is going to get real brittle. It, I, I live in Texas. I live in a very flat windy part of Texas with wild crazy weather patterns. We get heavy hail storms two three times a year. This is going to be broken in the first storm, I'm pretty sure. Also comes with this. This is the tail boom. That's what balances the generator on the pole. Uh, this is the second thing I wasn't too very impressed with. This was cut, uh, it appears by hand with like a hacksaw. And then this side, you know, end cut the same way. It's very rough, it's not very even. Uh, and the, uh, this side, it clamps onto the back of the generator. It's got a special bolt that goes through it, just like so. And then whenever you tighten it up, it's supposed to squeeze that gap. But this, the space, this was just eyeballed. It was cut very roughly. They, they tried the least hard they could to, to do that, which, get what you pay for. This machine was 400 bucks shipped to me. So there's that. The next thing that I don't really care a whole lot for is the nose cone. The way it works, very self-explanatory. Goes on like so. There is a threaded socket on the end of the, of the, the shaft. And the whole idea is that after you put everything together, that's the wrong bolt. Get everything together, you push that bolt through, you thread it down, and then this thing that's attached is supposed to snap onto the end here. What I don't like about it is that it's got some pretty aggressive teeth. After this snaps on, it's there, and it's going to be very difficult to take off. I am probably going to grind the uh, 
the, the teeth off of that and I don't know, maybe glue it down with a touch of silicone or not put it on there. I don't see the need for it to be there. The cone itself serves its purpose. And I don't think that little button not being there will be too tremendous of an issue. The generator itself. This thing is, first, it's very heavy. It weighs 40 pounds. Uh, the, the thing on here says 20 kilograms. I'm doing real terrible at converting in my head right now. So if that goes to 40 pounds, it's accurate. Uh, this is not something that you want to have to carry up uh, a pole. You, you will definitely want this on a tilt-up rig or you're going to want to, you know, Find a means to get it up there mechanically because this is not good for climbing up. Uh, the finish overall looks really nice. The the casting is really nice. The uh, the nacelle and the caps are and and the the fins here, the cage are all made out of cast aluminum and they are very nicely cast. There's very little flashing. The paint looks really good. The things that I don't like is that the paint that they put on it, there's no, I mean, it's not a proper powder coat, but it's not really a good paint either. It, it's chipping off with any kind of little impact. So, I mean, this thing has kind of rummaged around my, my workbench over the last uh, week or so, and it, it shows a lot of wear for it. So, again, we're going to be in you know, hailstorms and stuff like that, a lot of this paint's going to be gone. And also the East of Breeze logo, which is only on that one side, so you only get to see that if you're looking at it from the one side. This is just a really cheap vinyl sticker, and it's like peeling off, and, or not peeling, but like bubbled. And it's the same thing on the, on the tail, like on the five, it's all wrinkly and stuff, so... That stuff will peel off pretty soon. Um, this machine is, uh, is, is supposed to be 1500 watts, 24 volts. Um, East of Breeze does not produce any documentation about what wind speed it takes to get that 1500 watts. And even the tag here says 1600 watts. Uh, so, no documentation. We don't know what kind of amps it's supposed to push. But, you know, say at the top of it's charging, or say it's pushing 31, 32 volts on a 24 volt system, we're still looking at uh, 48 amps, 48 amps, so somewhere in there. It's a lot of amps. And the problem I have with that is that this stuff, the wire, is 12 gauge so I think the wire is undersized for for what they claim now in reality I expect this to see this thing making reliably you know if it can make 750 to 900 watts in a, you know a decent wind I'm gonna consider it a success it wasn't very expensive as far as these things go, and we'll see what happens. All right, so now we're gonna see what's on the inside. <sighs> Boy, was that an adventure. All right, if you guys are going to pick one of these up, eventually it will have to come apart. You're going to need to be prepared to either have a three-jaw puller to help you get one of the end caps off, or a press. Really, I had to bang on it a little bit, which is never good for a motor. It might just be best to take it to a shop that specializes in rebuilding motors. They'll be able to disassemble it for you without damaging anything, or should be. It's always a possibility of damage. All right, we'll start with the uh, least important part, in my opinion. The cell is made out of cast aluminum. It's very light. The slip ring is aluminum. 
not a super fan, a super big fan of that, but it is what it is. Um, you know, the finish on this is really nice. Uh, they, whenever they, they put it together, uh, and whenever they finished it, you know, somebody out there was trying. There is a little bit of slag, some flashing, like they didn't deburr this cast line in here, and there's a, an aluminum burr in there, which could, theoretically, could open one of your wires, but I think the, the risk is pretty minimal. But that's the only thing that I've seen in here. Every, all the surfaces are smooth. Um, this whole thing was sealed up with silicone, which made it a little bit more difficult to take apart. All the threads are, you know, they, they have thread locker on them. Uh, this thing was hard to disassemble. Uh, it's not going to accidentally come apart while in the air. All right. I like this stator. Uh, the, the, the coils are actually a little on a sloppy side, but it's, you know, everything is nice and tight. There are no loose wires, just no loops just sticking out somewhere like I've seen with the other Chinese turbines. Um, all the laminations are tight and stuck together. And th this has all been coated. It's got lacquer or, or enamel or, or epoxy all over it. So uh, not only are the, all the wires individually stuck to, to, uh, to their coil, but they're stuck together. Uh, there are, let's see if I can count, get a coil count. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. It looks like twenty-one coils. And of course, yeah, that's that's always yeah, kind of hard to count, but that's what it looks like. It looks like twenty-one coils. The wire used is. Let's see if we can get a good spot. Thirty-five thousandths. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay, I'm not really doing very good with conversions in my head right now. So uh, the gauge will be here. The metric size will be here to measure thirty-five thousandths in diameter. Thousands of an inch. Uh, this side, you can see that uh, you can see a lot more of the epoxy, which, you know, it's certainly not pretty, but sealed and coated. Uh, this stuff here, like I said, this whole thing was sealed up with, uh, with silicone, so it was was nicely sealed. Uh, it also has sealed bearings. They, this, I don't, I don't see a way moisture could get inside this thing unless something was was broken. All right. The next thing is the rotor. All right. The rotor has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 magnets on it. The magnets are only held down with glue, which, uh, I don't know. I'd like to see screws or something better, but, eh, $400 turbine. You get what you pay for. Uh, what I do like about this a lot is the way this is made, the, the stator looks solid. What I would be concerned with is the magnets coming loose or losing uh, losing power and in that situation this would be very easy to just make a new rotor with better magnets secured in a better way. Uh, you know, assuming you have 
a, you know, a machine shop that could do that. Now, one of the things that I do see that I don't care for and I think is really amusing. All right. Let's zero this out. Also, oh, I need to get an aluminum caliper. Gap between these two sets of magnets is 210 thousandths of an inch. Yeah, let's go to this one. This one is 230. This gap Three hundred and seventy-five thousandths. Every every gap on this rotor is different. Even at opposite ends of the same run, like the, these two magnets, the gap on this end is larger than the gap on this end. So, no consistency whatsoever. These guys, whenever they milled this, and what, what they did was they milled a, a flat on the rotor laminations themselves and just plopped the magnet down on it. And then, even at that, that's, you know, that time, like I said, they're, they're just running this, running an end mill over this to make a flat spot to glue their magnets. They, they didn't measure anything. They just said, hey, I've got to have, uh, you know, i got to get 12 magnets on here and just mill them wherever. I don't know. If it works, it works. It's just going to... I don't think it's going to make it not work. I think it's just going to make it not work as well as it could. Then uh, the bearings that are in here, the part number is 6205-2RS. They're the same on both sides. Like I said, they are sealed, which is which is very nice. Um, this really should hold up pretty well to being outside in the weather. Uh, really, the only thing that I don't like, that I really don't like about this this whole setup is this is the, the sloppiest rotor I've seen so far. All the other rotors, I mean, they may have had smaller magnets, weaker magnets, but they were made with some consistency. All right. Just while I've got it apart, just so we have a size for these magnets. 598 thousandths wide. Okay, I do have to guess a little bit because there's two magnets stacked end to end. And I, I don't want to... And there's glue between them, so I can't really measure the whole length. But it looks like they are... One point... 565 five long and again got to do a little bit of a of a guess here like 190 thousandths thick so basically 5 eighths by an inch and a half by an eighth I guess a little bit more than eighth. Three sixteenths. That's the heart of the machine.